Okay, so the topic in this video is what are stem cells, but more specifically, why are they so controversial? There's kind of an argument going on in our society on the use of stem cells for scientific research. And I really would hope that you, by the end of this video, can understand the controversy and, and at least make a defense, uh, pro or con, depending on what side of the, con uh, of the argument that you're on. I do not plan to give my personal views. The point of this video is simply to educate. I hope the tone of my voice or the words that I use don't accidentally uh, let my uh, opinions be shown. So let's go ahead and get started. So you think of stem cells. Well, before we get into stem cells, we need to turn back the clock a little bit. Well, here's a woman's egg cell. And so fertilizing the egg. So here is a female egg cell. And it's haploid, and if you remember from science class, uh, you know, haploid is a vocabulary word that means it's a cell with half the total number of chromosomes that a, that a species normally has. In humans, we normally have 46 chromosomes. Egg cells are haploid, which means they have 23. So in that blue nucleus of the picture are 23 chromosomes. And here come many sperm cells from the soon-to-be father. So here come a whole bunch of sperm cells, and in reality, again, men release millions and millions of sperm cells. Sperm cells also are haploid, just like female egg cells. So there's 23 chromosomes in each of these uh, five sperm cells that I've drawn. And so uh, fertilizing the egg. Well, one sperm will eventually penetrate the egg, and not the entire sperm, by the way. In the animation in a moment, you're going to see just kind of like the head of the sperm will enter the egg, and the nucleus of the egg will combine with the nucleus of the sperm. Here we go in our animation. There goes the head of the sperm, and the nucleus of the sperm fuses with the nucleus of the egg. 23 chromosomes from the sperm, 23 chromosomes from the egg. You now have what's called a fertilized egg, or a zygote, with 46 chromosomes. Congratulations, mom's pregnant. Well, that, uh, that zygote, that fertilized egg, that zygote is going to multiply by the cellular process called mitosis. So for nine months, that zygote is going to divide and become two cells and four and six and eight and so on. So here we go. So like it says, the mito uh, mitosis is going to divide the zygote. One cell becomes two to become four. By the way, it's not a zygote anymore. Uh, it's simply a, a growing embryo, I guess. And so here uh, it divides again and divides again and divides again and again and again and again. Well, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's zoom out a little bit and see kind of what it looks like in this early stage. So when we zoom out, we kind of see this round circular structure. And I want to label a few things. First of all, overall, this round object is what is called a blastocyst. So the cells have divided many times, and it forms this round object called a blastocyst. It's filled with a fluid. That white space in the middle is filled with a fluid. It's not filled with empty, hollow air. Uh, the outer gray ring of cells eventually are going to become the placenta of the developing baby. The placenta is kind of like the sac that the baby will grow within. Now, the lump of green in the middle, the, that's what's important. I want you to pay attention to this mass of inside cells right there in green. These are embryonic stem cells. Eventually, this green mass will grow into the baby. But for now, we're only, you know, perhaps only a few days to a, a couple weeks into uh, the development of the embryo. So these green cells are stem cells. And so I want you to pay attention to the green embryonic stem cells in the picture. What's so unique about them? Well, what's so unique about embryonic stem cells is that they don't have specified functions yet. They have the potential to become any type of cell in the human body. As the embryo develops further and further and further, some of those stem cells will eventually become brain cells. Other stem cells will eventually become muscle cells. Other stem cells will eventually become liver cells. But in this early stage, they don't have specified functions yet. These are what we call stem cells. So, if cell division continues for nine months, eventually the embryo grows into a baby. Hopefully it's a healthy baby boy or healthy baby girl, 10 fingers, 10 toes. Hopefully the kid, li kid lives happily ever after. Well, let's kind of go into the research now. 
Okay, when we look at stem cell research, so during research, so here was our blastocyst again. A stem cell might be removed from this blastocyst. So let's remove one of the green stem cells from that blastocyst. Now, we're going to come back to this in a moment, but unfortunately, removing that stem cell destroys the remainder of the blastocyst. We're going to come back to that in a few minutes, because that kind of is the heart of the controversy. But for now, I want to focus on that green stem cell that's been removed. That stem cell is going to be grown into a grouping of stem cells. So let's remove the blastocyst. It's, sadly, it's been destroyed in this process. So that one green stem cell multiplies and multiplies and multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. Again, this is all in a lab now. This isn't in a woman's uh, uterus or anything. This is in, in a lab in a petri dish. We have what's called here a line of stem cells. If you've ever heard the term a stem cell line, it's a small group of stem cells derived from one original stem cell. And so when we continue, uh, stem cells, what's so neat about them, what's so promising about them, is stem cells are thought to be able to grow into new cells that might be able to replace damaged cells. Let me go through a little fictional example here. Here we have a motorcycle accident. And so let's say that a gentleman, a gentleman by the name of Lewis was involved in a motorcycle accident. And as a result of the accident, Lewis sadly suffered brain damage. You know, he survived the crash. The helmet provided him some protection, but still the impact was fairly traumatic, and he had some brain damage as a result. Well, you know, let's zoom on in to, that, to the damaged area of his brain for a closer look. When we zoom on in, here's what we see. Notice those pink cells, I have a key that just popped up, those pink cells are healthy cells, and the gray cells pretend are the cells that were damaged in the motorcycle accident. Well, what, we've, what we're seeing, and why research is so promising, we're seeing that by placing stem cells around the damaged area, that the, the cells around the damaged area those implanted stem cells will grow into healthy brain cells, hopefully as a way to treat, I don't, I don't want to go so far as to say cure, but at least provide treatment that perhaps Lewis, in this fictional example, can be treated and have a higher quality, quality of life, maybe regain some of the, uh, the, the uh, regain some of his abilities that perhaps he lost as a result of the accident. So that's kind of what the promise of stem cell research is. Now in this example I had the stem cells become brain cells, but research is promising in other areas as well. You know, here's a picture right here, and you know, in a moment pause the video and kind of check out the, the chart in a little more detail, but here's a list of diseases and conditions where stem cell treatment is promising or emerging, or we're developing treatments. And you can see one of them on the list is traumatic brain injury, kind of like the example we went over with our motorcycle accident. You know, in that example, I had the stem cells turn into muscle cells, or excuse me, in that example, I had the stem cells turn into brain cells. But again, we're seeing that stem cells can be, can be turned into muscle cells to help people with, for instance, muscular dystrophy. And so uh, there, there's a great list of promise that comes from stem cell therapies. So let's come back to this picture here where we talked about stem cell research. And so what stem cell research is trying to do is we're trying to learn more of the secrets. We're trying to discover the secret of how stem cells, of embryonic stem cells, become specific cells. We want to know what causes some embryonic stem cells to become muscle cells. What causes other embryonic stem cells to become liver cells? What causes, uh, or I should say, excuse me, um, can healthy cells, can healthy cells be turned backwards into stem cells, and therefore, once we have them turned backwards into stem cells, can we then turn them forward back into something else of our desire? You know, these are some of the areas that are being researched. And again, as I mentioned, uh, we're still kind of in the early stages of this research, but the research is very promising. So what about the controversy? We really need to understand that now. So why is this controversial? I kind of glossed over it a few moments ago, and now I really want to focus on that. 
So remember the egg cell? At the very beginning of the video, we saw this egg cell with 23 chromosomes inside of the blue nucleus. Well, here come all the sperm cells. Again, five sperm cells. Each of the sperm cells has 23 chromosomes as well. So the egg and the sperm are haploid cells. And so one sperm is going to fertilize the egg, just like we saw a moment ago, and make a zygote, a fertilized egg with 46 chromosomes. I hope you remember what happens next. That zygote is going to multiply by the process of mitosis over and over and over again. So here we see the zygote dividing by mitosis over and over and over and over again. Now we saw this earlier. Well, let's zoom back out. The cells continue to divide. Let's zoom back out. And when we zoom back out, we see that lump of cells again called a blastocyst. We saw this picture earlier. Now we're going to get into why this process and, and the re this research is so controversial. So during research, we mentioned a moment ago that a stem cell will be removed from that blastocyst. And, and I brought this up earlier, but I didn't really stress uh, why this is such a controversial topic in our society. During the extraction of that green embryonic stem cell, the blastocyst is destroyed. And this is where the topic gets controversial. The argument that some make those who are against embryonic stem cell research. The argument they make is that they feel that human life begins when a zygote is created. Human life begins when a fertilized egg is created. So therefore, if the blastocyst is destroyed, that's the same thing as, the, as killing of a, human, of a human being. And so that is where we get into some of the controversies around embryonic stem cell research, even though some very, very good therapies and treatments are coming out of this research. The argument is, is that perhaps ethically this is not a sound practice because of the destroying of the blastocyst. Now, if you're watching this video, I hope you personally will do some reflection, you know, look at your ethics, your morals, perhaps your religious stance, and I hope you will come up with your own view. Again, I'm trying to leave my personal view out of this. The topic of this video is hopefully to simply educate. And so you think about, well, where do all these research companies and universities, where do they get their stem cells from? Well, if you've heard of a process called in vitro fertilization, you may have heard of, of, a, of a test tube baby. Well, that's really what in vitro fertilization is. In in vitro fertilization, what it is, it's a process used by parents who are not able to conceive a child the natural way through sex. For whatever reason, maybe there's, uh, there's, some, there's some kind of defect either with the male reproductive system or the female reproductive system and a let's say a married couple is just not able to conceive the natural way they can go to a clinic and have what's called in vitro fertilization done and what happens during this process so here's a picture of a woman's uh, reproductive system and if we look at the two ovaries you might know that inside of each of the woman's ovaries are thousands and thousands of of egg cells. And so during the process, egg cells are removed surgically from the mother's ovaries. So I took about a dozen or so egg cells out in this animation. So there are the dozen egg cells that we, that we just removed surgically from the mother's ovaries. Well, what happens next? In in vitro fertilization next, sperm from the father will be used to fertilize each egg. <laughs> Hopefully you know that when it comes to getting sperm from a male, you don't need surgery to get sperm from a male. It's pretty easy to get sperm from a, from a male, so use your imagination. So sperm will be, will be taken from the male and will be used to fertilize each of these eggs. And so therefore, many zygotes are created. And this is all happening outside of the woman's body. It's happening in, in a lab dish, in a petri dish. So again, this is not happening naturally inside of a woman's body. Well, when we continue to look at what happens next, what hap happens with these 12 or so zygotes is eventually they're going to grow. They're going to go through mitosis. Each one of them is going to grow into a blastocyst. So here we have about a dozen or so blastocysts. Well, what happens next? A few of the blastocysts, not all 12, a few of them, I have three of them pulsing in the video right now. 
three blastocysts perhaps are going to be implanted into the uterus of the hopeful mother. So perhaps these three that are pulsing have been deemed to be healthier uh, and, and, and therefore the best chance to grow inside of the uterus of the woman. So those three are going to be implanted. Now the reason they, they plant usually more than one is because the odds of all three successfully taking and growing into a baby are very slim. Chances are um, one or two or perhaps even all three of them aren't going to survive and you kind of got to go over, start over with the next group of blastocysts. But every now and then, you know, one of them might take. And so what happens if the woman becomes pregnant? Well, good for her at least. She's going to, you know, her and the, and the father were, are going to become parents. But what, what happens with these leftover in my animation here, in my video here, what happens with these nine leftover blastocysts? If a woman becomes pregnant, she doesn't really need these anymore. So what happens is they're, they're simply destroyed as medical waste. Or here's where the research comes in. A lot of times, these blastocysts will be used in embryonic stem cell research. So this is where, this is where you know universities and private organizations that are doing research. This is where they obtain their uh, their stem cells from right here. And so again, keep in mind what the controversy is. Again, is that some believe that life begins at the zygote, and therefore each blastocyst that is destroyed is the same thing as killing a human life. Again, your job is to you know, weigh your own, uh, your own thoughts and come up with your own stance. So let's wrap up this video and quickly go over what is the federal government's view on stem cell research. Well, March 9th, 2009, President Barack Obama signed Executive Order 13505. And what this order did is that it removed funding restrictions that were placed on embryonic stem cell research under the George Bush administration, George W. Bush, the second Bush, George Bush II, George Bush Jr. And so during George Bush's presidency, there were some restrictions that were placed on the funding of embryonic stem cell research with federal taxpayer money. And so, uh, one, uh, what 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 this executive order did was remove those uh, those restrictions on funding, and so this allowed more research to be done on embryonic stem cells. And one of the quotes, the comments that that Barack Obama made as he signed this executive order was that we make scientific decisions based on facts, not ideology. So you may not. Uh, you, you may not agree with this particular decision, but this is our current view, governmental view, on stem cell research. On January 7, 2013, the Supreme Court rejected to hear a lawsuit that was meant to block Executive Order 13505. So because the Supreme Court refused to hear this lawsuit, uh, the Executive Order was enacted, and currently uh, those restrictions that were under the George Bush years were, have been removed. So that really concludes this particular video on embryonic stem cell controversies. Again, I hope I didn't include any tones in my voice. I sure didn't mean to if I did. I really wanted to just educate and inform and allow you, the viewer, to kind of weigh this information and, uh, uh, and, and take it from there. So I hope you found the video helpful. Thank you for watching.